Hi, this is Jack at Jack's Transmissions, and today we're going to talk about bell housings. We have a CBA here, DBA here, out of the R35 GTR. We've been rebuilding these for a long time. We really don't advertise it much, but there's a lot of misinformation out there, a lot of confusion as to what's going on with these. So we thought we'd clear a few things up here and show what we offer in our rebuilds compared to what maybe other people are offering in the industry. So with the CBA bell housing, you know, you have a pair of bearings. You have a bearing on this end of the shaft here, another bearing on the engine side of the shaft on the inside here. And all that does is support the bearing in here, just so it can move freely. It is a sealed bearing, has its own grease in it and everything. You know, it's a maintenance-free bearing. It's supposed to last the life of the vehicle, but as we all know, it doesn't. And uh, so the CBA, what makes the CBA different than DBA is, the CBA, the bearing is pressed directly into the housing. So the bearing is on the aluminum housing. And in time, just due to abusive engine harmonics, which is common in automotive applications, uh, just driving the car, the environment, things like that, the area where the outer bearing race meets to the case, the case begins to compress and wear out due to you know, movement and impact on the case, you know, just stress. So after some time, it'll get loose. This will be able to move back and forth in the housing and you'll get some knocking noises out of the bell housing. And you also get a vibration. On a CBA bell housing, a sure way to know that there's something wrong with it is if you hold, if you're sitting at idle, put the car in neutral or park, run the RPMs up to like 2,500. If you get like, zzz, like a buzz coming from it and it feels like it's directly under your feet, that could be a loose and faulty CBA bell housing. Best way to check, as always with these, is don't go by how you feel or the sounds you hear. Get under the car, grab a hold of the carbon prop shaft that goes between the, the bell housing here and the trans, and here at the bell housing, try moving it up and down. There should be no movement. If there's no play, you're good. If there's movement, you got a problem. Now in the past, about 10 years ago, we had a customer car, CBA, with one of these that was loose, didn't want to fix it, just left it alone. About a month later, it exploded under the car. I've never seen anything like it. That's the worst bell housing failure I've ever seen. But these bell housings can come apart in a very dramatic way. You really don't want to fool around with these and you really want to make sure they're built right. When that bell housing let go, the drive shaft came up, slammed everything from under the car, it damaged the floorboards, everything in the center console area was destroyed. We thought the car was totaled. We were able to fix it, get it 100% again. It, it was just pure luck. Just be careful with these bell housings. They're not something you really want to fool around with. So now the DBAs, what's different about the DBA housings is they used a steel sleeve that they pressed into the housing as support and then the bearing presses into the steel sleeve. This helps preserve the housing, keep some of the stress away, so it lasts longer and works better. And it did. It did a really good job. Uh, DBA bell housings lasted a lot longer, but they also have a failure rate. And bearings go bad in these, just like they do in the CBAs, and they need to be replaced. Now, a lot of places, they only rebuild DBA bell housings because it's easy. It's already got a sleeve in there and everything. With these CBAs, we machine it in our CNC and we install our own sleeve and then new bearings. That's a lot of work and use, utilizes equipment that a lot of people don't have. With these, it's easy since the factory already had a sleeve in there. People would just remove the bad bearings, slap new bearings in, ship it, good to go. The platform's aging and it's not the same anymore. The past few of these DBA bell housings we've received lately has had so much distortion in the aluminum housing that it made the sleeve, the steel sleeve, mind you, in the case, egg-shaped. So you press the old bearing out, you press the new one in, and the new bearing wouldn't even turn. There'd be resistance to it. We learned this the hard way, trust me. There is a problem where you get distortion in the case, and these have to be machined, just like the CBAs now. Again, platform is aging. You may get lucky with one with low miles, it may go together fine. There may not be distortion in the case. But now that we've been checking for it in the DBAs also, there's been a lot of distortion we've been finding. Here's a video of a DBA bell housing 
in our CNC where we machined it just a thousandths and you could see where the machine was hitting only parts of it, it was so distorted. Okay, uh, to try to prove what we're talking about here, if we look down here, you see these lines? We just ran this in the CNC and we did a thousandths. You see it did not make contact with this area here, that's where the bearing sits. But over on this side, it's nice and shiny, that's where it did make contact. So as we can see here, we can see the distortion. This area here is further out, this area was in, so I, you know the bearing had unequal uh, pressure on it, and that's what causes premature bearing failure. So, you know, that's what we do. Run it on the CNC, so we did a thousandths, it wasn't enough, we'll do another thousandths until we have even contact all the way around and it's absolutely perfect where it's supposed to be. Then we install sleeve that fits this and your new bearings, then you know that it's straight and it's going to live. So that's pretty crazy. So that's where the sleeve was pressed in. So what we have to do here is we have to machine it, you know, the housing out, throw away the factory sleeve because it's not gonna fit anymore. And then we put our own sleeve in there that's oversized into the machined area of the aluminum housing. Then we put the bearing in there. That way we know everything is straight and true and the bearing is no longer under any stress of the sleeve being distorted. So your bearings will last longer, it'll run quieter, it's just a much better build uh, moving forward. So that's about it. Now as far as noises are concerned with these, anytime anybody hears any noise from an R35, there's somebody on the internet is like, bell housing, bell housing. They, there's like a panic over the bell housing. So here's some sounds that are normal for an R35 that is not a bell housing issue. So one is uh, the creep feature on the GR6. So when you let go of the brake pedal, the clutches very gently engage and allow you to creep forward a little bit. If you go into your transmission utility and you crank your touch points way up like you're not supposed to, it'll lug the engine. And whenever the engine is lugged, it'll make a noise like this. You hear that noise, that rattle? Anytime anybody hears that rattle, they think it's a bell housing. It is not. It is the engine lugging due to excessive uh, touch point uh, preferences. So that's one thing that's doing it. Another thing that would make that exact same noise is if the idle is way too low. Uh, the, another thing that'll make a noise that's more of like a popping, a rattle and pop noise, is an engine misfire. You see it all the time. Somebody bring a car in, my bell housing's bad. We'll listen to it when you hear like a pop coming through it. I see engine misfiring. Could be anything from bad fuel injector, bad spark plug, burn valve, who knows? engine is not running perfectly, anything that comes through the engine gets resonated through that prop shaft. So if you have a misfire, the prop shaft is going to pop every time the engine misfires. If the engine is lugged down real low, the lugging of the engine and that excessive harmonics resonating through the system is going to be amplified through that carbon prop shaft. Again, don't panic when you hear noises from a, these R35 GTRs. They're pretty raw. They're a pretty amazing car. But they make a lot of weird noises is what makes them how they are. Just becoming familiar with the noises and knowing what's normal or not is really the best way to go about these so you don't panic over everything you hear. But in this case, with these noises, it has nothing to do with the bell housing. It's normal behavior. Now, there are some other failures with these that will create some noises like a hissing sound coming from the bell housing area. It sounds like you have like a huge vacuum leak. This DBA bell housing here had that issue. It was fine, it wasn't loose or anything, but it was like shh, it was making a noise like that as the car was running. That had to do with distortion in the casing. 
It was putting unnecessary stress on the bearing and the bearing was just worrying away eating itself. But again, the best way to check it is get under the car, grab onto that prop shaft and try moving it around, the carbon prop shaft. If it doesn't move up and down or side to side, you're fine. Everything's okay. If you feel any kind of movement there at all, there's a problem and you don't want to fool around with them. Do you definitely want to fix it? Because it could cause some pretty serious damage to the car if any of these let go due to a bearing failure. I'm hoping that this information helps you. I'm hoping that you see that with the work that we put into these, it is a very precise and high quality repair here. We're not just slapping bearings in these things. We're running it through our machine. We're making sure they're straight and true and putting them together so they're absolutely perfect. All the aftermarket parts people have for these, we found no use for them. Uh, we, when we rebuild these, We've had them in cars that are running sevens all the way up to a daily driver street car. My personal car actually has, even though it's a DBA, it has one of our very first CBA bell housings we built in here. It's about 10 years old now. It still works perfectly. It's, it's excellent. So, you know, and you, you, as you guys seen through my videos, I run the hell out of this car. So, um, yeah, so especially for a, a street car of any power range, factory bell housing that's built properly, is better than anything else out there. So we really appreciate uh, your business and watching our videos. Thanks for your time. Here we go. So this is a DBA uh, bell housing that we're machining because it is distorted. And uh, I think we're really the only ones that do this. So uh, when the machine is done, it's gonna be absolutely perfect on the money. So when we put the new bearings in there, there's no uh, unusual loading on the bearings, so it survives and lives a long life. And here you go. Jax Transmissions, we CNC all of our bell housings, whether it's CBA or DBA. We do CBAs too. Thanks.